Hi, I'm Shannon Cueva. Welcome to Shady Creek. Today, we're going to give you a quick glimpse into our survival class. Our teachers are fifth and sixth grade students who participated in our week-long residential environmental science program. So, pay attention, you might just learn something that could save your life. Shelter is the most important thing that you need to survive. In a survival situation, in extreme weather conditions, you only have as little as two to three hours to build your shelter. Some people may know already that you can survive, I believe, three days without water, three weeks without food. But there's only, you only have three hours to build a shelter. Base stop! To make a shelter, you would need a base, which could be a tree. And then off of that, you'd want to put a ridge. This would just be the backbone to your shelter. Ridge pole! And off of that, you'd put ribs, which connect it. And you'd want to make them interlock. Ribs! And then we put duff on it. it stands for dead stuff, which is like mud and leaves and um, sticks and grass. Duff! Duff has to be armpit length. Has to go all the way in. The best survival shelters keep you warm and dry. Let's see if they pass the rain test. Ah! Ah! Save us! Ah! Alright, a couple more seconds, let's see how it looks. Alright. <laughs> Do me a favor, no, that's coming out, man. Let's see how you look. The moment of truth is here. Did you get wet? No. Nope. Ah! Say boys and girls! From the beginning we have face stuff, face stuff, rich ball, rich ball, ribs, ribs, stuff, In a survival kit, one of the most important things that you could have is a flint and a piece of steel. Because you would need it in, an, in a hazardous environment to do many things. One, to cook your food to make sure that you don't get sick. To keep warm because that's always important. And to sometimes ward off predators. So what you do is that you have a flint like this, but you can only do it on certain parts of it. And you have to have a piece of steel. And you strike it like this to make a spark. And on the back so, like, of this, they'll have magnesium that you can just peel off little flakes, which are extremely flammable. And also things that you could use that are flammable would be cotton balls if you have them in a first aid kit, um, Vaseline, and even pocket lint is very flammable. So those are very important components in your fire kit. In a survival situation, fire can be very important, but it can also be very dangerous. Knowing how, when, and where to build a fire is not only important for your safety, but also for the protection of the area that you are in. If you're going to practice your survival skills at home, only build a fire with adult supervision. In a survival situation, you can survive two to three days without water, and you want to make sure that the water that you drink won't make you sick. Water that looks clean can contain parasites like Giardia. We use the acronym FIBS to help us remember how to treat our water to make it safe to drink. The first part in the acronym FIBS is F, which stands for filter. And this goes in to your water source and this goes in to your water bottle. It's very important to filter your water because your water can be filled with parasites, sticks, bugs, dead things, and you want to make sure it gets out. So the second part of the acronym FIBS is 
I, which stands for iodine, which are these little iodine tablets that are used to purify water. Um, these are used to kill such parasites such as um, Giardia, which is a type of microorganism that will cause severe dehydration and all loss of body fluids um, in your body. And the acronym FIBS, the B in it stands for boil. After you filter the water, boiling is important because it can rid it of microorganisms because being sick just wastes more energy that you need to survive. The letter in the acronym FIBS is the letter S, which stands for solar still. With a solar still, you can literally make your own water. You put, you dig a hole, put a cup in the center of the hole, Find, greener, find live greenery and put it around your cup. Spread a large plastic covering over it and put rocks on each of the four corners and put a small rock in the center above your cup. When the sun shines on the plants, the water will evaporate off of the plants and condense on the top. They will drip down to the small rock and then drip into your cup, thus giving you water. Every time you go into the wilderness, you need to be prepared for the worst case scenario. Having a survival kit will help increase your chances of being found safe and healthy. Let's take a look at what you should keep inside your survival kit. What I have here is a survival blanket and this will help you um, keep warm and retain heat while you're in the wild. Like if it's really cold, you could just wrap yourself in this and it'll help you keep warm. I have matches, and these are like not ordinary matches. These are waterproof matches. When it, like if you're if it's raining and you're stranded, these would like stay on if you get them wet. So they're really good. I have a Swiss Army knife. You could hunt with it. You could clean an animal that you kill with it. You could start a fire with it. Um, make a bow and arrow with it. You can pretty much do anything with it. And a uh, Swiss Army knife is a good tool to have in your survival kit. If you ever get lost and get hurt, this will be the best thing to use if you get hurt. It can cure you with all kinds of things like band-aids, medical gloves, medical tape, and an instruction kit. Sword still is a really good thing to have when you're out in the forest and you're lost and it's coming dark. If you start a fire with it, you're, you're better chances to survive. What I have here is called iodine tablets. What they do is you insert them in your water and if it's dirty, it will clean it. It might not taste the greatest, but it's clean enough to drink. If you're lost, you, uh, you can shine it in the sunlight and it'll make a bright sh shine so if a plane's gone by, by you can shine it, try to shine it in the, their direction and then they'll, may, they might see you. This is a really good thing to have when you're out there. What I have here is called a hunter safety guide. It teaches you how to build a fire, use a map, lots of stuff. You should put it in a safety kit so that you can, you know, survive. <laughs> This little uh, whistle can help you if you're stranded, lost. You could use this to blow into it. Three little whistles. <whistles> Somebody like, out there could hear you. If you get stranded or something and you're by like a river or a creek or something and you get hungry, you just open it up and it, you can see it's just um, safety pins with fishing line on it. And you just like shape it into a hook and then throw it in there and you get a fish. What I have here is a hiker's best friend. It can filter water from the creek into drinkable water that you can take around to drink. You insert this end into the creek and this end into your water bottle. Then you pump this so the water will come from this end 
threw the little gadget here and out into your water bottle. So when the water is filtered through the filter, it'll be all nice and clean, and then you can drink it and you won't get sick.